Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our last neurotheology lecture. I hope you've enjoyed the series. This will be uh, not just a wrap up lecture, but hopefully the conclusions now of the notion that we do have a spirituality program, that this spirituality program has far ranging effects as we've seen on our mental health, on our physical health, on our sense of happiness and well being. Um, all of these really are pointing toward an even deeper hidden issue about our brain that we will inshallah wrap up with um, in this last lecture. So we've already seen the notion of rewarding prayers, that um, our prayers, because of the way our brain is built, uh, have a very positive reward in terms of mental health and physical health. And we've talked about uh, some of the neurophysiology behind this. What I'd like to touch on now is the idea that all of these positive effects, when we look at the medical literature, we see that they are associated with prayer as a form of frequently recurring behavior. And so as a form of frequently recurring behavior, we see that it stimulates, for example, the dopaminergic reward system in the brain. And what I'd like to focus on here is the word frequently. Because for all of these positive effects, we're not just talking about a single prayer or once a month, you know, praying. We're talking about prayer as a habit, as a way of life. And why is that? Well, it is because of a very, very uh, interesting and profound reality that we're just uh, starting to come to terms with. So far, we've been talking using terms like running the spirituality program in the brain, treating the brain as a computer. However, normally when we run a computer program, at least before the age of AI and deep learning and so on, Running the computer program does what the computer program is designed to do, but it doesn't alter the program. It doesn't alter, I'm sorry, the computer. When you run a computer program, it doesn't rewire your computer. It just runs the program. However, we have a phenomena in our brain known as neuroplasticity. Our brain is the most complex structure known in the universe. And these aren't just my words. You will find them echoed by numerous scientists, or I'm actually the one echoing them. The brain is composed of roughly 100 billion neurons interconnected in such a way that there are 125 trillion synapses. The synapses are the connections between the neurons. And whenever we act, whenever we do things, we basically are connecting and reconnecting neurons. So we are altering the structure of the brain. So when we run the spirituality program, we are not only getting that particular effect, we're not only getting those other good broad-based ancillary effects we talked about, like uh, increased happiness, increased well-being, less depression, less anxiety, less heart disease, less cancer, uh, more longevity. But beyond all of that, and deeper than all of that, we are rewiring our brain. And there are a couple of different issues that spring from that. Number one, the question that is often asked, especially by young people, why do I have to pray five times a day? Well, it is because prayer actually reshapes the brain. It reshapes our reality. And that is only done by constancy in the prayer. And so I'm pulling out here uh, a variety of quotes from uh, articles such as this, that scientists have found that the brains of people who spend untold hours in prayer and meditation are different the brain actually gets rewired. And neuroscientist Richard Davidson says that you can change your brain with experience and training. Quote, you can sculpt your brain just as you'd sculpt your muscles if you went to the gym. 
Our brains are continuously being sculpted, whether you like it or not, wittingly or unwittingly. And so think of when you learn a piece of music, if you play music. First, you're starting to practice and, and, and it's slow going. And then with more and more and more practice, it becomes automatic. You develop muscle memory and you just sit down and play it. Or learning a new language uh, or memorizing a surah of the Quran. And once you have it memorized, then it becomes fluid and easy. How do all of these things happen? They happen because we rewire the brain. We make different connections among the neurons. And that basically doing that is just like re-sculpting your body when you go to the gym. You go to the gym for one workout, you're not going to do anything. But you go to the gym every day and you will see effects. And the same thing with prayer. If we want to reshape our brain, to all of those positive effects that we have talked about, it requires constancy in prayer. It requires doing it over and over. Now, the interesting thing is that not only does doing things change your brain, not doing things also changes your brain. So if you, for example, studied Spanish in high school and you became fluent in Spanish or French or German, you know that if you go years without using that, you will lose it. Let's say you studied calculus in college and you got pretty good at uh, doing integrals. And uh, you, know, you could do integration by parts in your sleep. Then a few years out, you don't do it, you've lost it. So not doing things also changes the brain. So we find that we are faced with a choice. We can either have the brain of those who pray and practice religiosity and spirituality on a regular basis, or the brain of those who don't. And doing something changes the brain, and doing nothing also changes the brain. And we then have to make that choice. But we now begin to understand why do we have to pray five times a day every day? It is because. It is this constancy of practice that makes and cements the connections of this newly sculpted brain of a spiritual person. And Andrew Newberg looked at you know, all of these different effects in, in a variety of the articles and books we've already uh, talked about in relation to him. And he found that you know, a short time of prayer each day makes a profound effect on the brain, but it needs to be a constant practice. And so we see that if we do it regularly, it strengthens, for example, one of the things it does is a unique neural circuit that enhances our social awareness and empathy and helps us love our neighbor by developing a heightened sense of compassion, subduing negative emotions. We actually wire a circuit in the brain that does this. And the more we pray, the stronger that wiring becomes. The less we pray, the wiring starts to fray and fall apart. And so again, we return to our verse from Surah Al-Fatih. He is the one who has bestowed tranquility on the hearts of the believers so they may increase faith upon their faith to achieve this tranquility as a constant feature of our lives means regular practice to strengthen the neural circuitry that underlies it. And again, the bottom line from everything we've said is that prayer changes the brain function. And every article coming out is finding one facet of this like, for example, it boosts activity of the anterior cingulate cortex, like um, uh, we just talked about, increasing compassion and empathy. And the notion here, how does this happen? It happens because we have neuroplasticity. The brain isn't just fixed. We're not just born with a given level of compassion or a given level of empathy that's hardwired into our brain. No. 
our brain can be rewired and prayer rewires it so we can become better people. And this notion of neuroplasticity gives us tremendous hope and in some sense also gives us, I think, tremendous obligation because we realize that we now have a choice to make. The responsibility is on us. We have been given a dynamic, incredibly complex machine. If we do something, we rewire it one way. If we do nothing, we rewire it a different way. And so again, here from Andrew Newberg, our brain will constantly change and we need to be mindful of whether we're developing in good or destructive ways. The disciplines we engage every day, every week, every year, fundamentally shape the destiny of our life. And for us, also the destiny of our afterlife. And we need to be aware of the extent to which our behavior affects our brain. So we always think of the brain affecting our behavior. But we also need to realize that the behavior affects our brain. And so all of these positive effects, and we said that Andrew Newberg, you know, has been a pioneer in this idea of how God changes your brain, looking, founding, studying the field of neurotheology, not only um, how our brain is wired for the spirituality program, but how running the spirituality program rewires the brain and strengthens all of these aspects. And the final thing I want to leave you with, some of you may think, okay, well, this is a guy who's trying to use science to promote religiosity. He's a religious, God-fearing man, and so he is somehow trying to mold his science to come to the conclusions he wants. So I'd like to end this series with a question that was put to him. And this is his book, How God Changes Your Brain, talking about all of these neuroplasticity issues we've been mentioning. And it's written by Andrew Newberg and Mark Robert Waldman. And he says, many of you are wondering, do I believe in God? And he answers, I'm not even sure God exists. My associate Mark here, Mark Robert Waldman, doesn't believe God exists at all. I'm not sure. But what we can prove to you is that believing that God exists is fundamentally good for you as a human being. So here you have one author who's an agnostic, one author who's an atheist. They have no pro-religion agenda to push. And they're saying, even though one of us is unsure, one of us doesn't believe God exists, but what our science is telling us is that if you believe that God exists, it is fundamentally good for you as a human being. And I think that's a very, very fitting quote to end our series on. I hope, inshallah, you have found this new, interesting, instructive, uplifting, and God bless you, inshallah, and bless us all to becoming such better human beings. Assalamu alaikum. And